Nerd Talk. I'm Pixie. I'm Sun. And I'm Pyro Sam. And as you can see, well, if you're watching the video, uh, we've relocated. Welcome to Ooh, Nerd moving. Talk Studio 2.0, also known it's more as like my, 1 .1. my college apartment. So They yeah. may tell you that I'm thousands of miles away, but no, trust me, I lifted all of the heavy boxes during this moving. They didn't do shit. It was all <laughs> only with his brain. That and is the we just heard the part. explicit tag. Way to go. We haven't even been on the air for a minute. You know, <laughs> oh, it's well. important to start strong. <laughs> Record setting, even. So this That's is a new era for Nerd Talk, or at least five months worth. It's very good Yay. that we start the episode off with profanity, because today we're going to be talking about a children's television show. Woo! And also censorship. Yes, so actually... And censoring children's television shows. Indeed. And so it's all good stuff. The show is, of course, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Because what other show would it be? This is the internet. <laughs> we don't watch any other children's shows, we promise. Well... Maybe you don't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually don't, but that's not true of the internet. Here the internet is pretty big into Transformers. I probably thought Beast Wars was a good cartoon. <laughs> I have the fit of huh? I have sure. very vague memories of Beast Wars, and I'm going to keep it that hey. way. Robots that turn into animals. That's cool, right? Not as right. cool as ponies that ride other ponies for transportation. <laughs> That's a little warm. Well, they get pulled by other ponies in carts, which is not the same. Right. They don't just, you know, like saddle up. It's not like they jump on each other's backs. <laughs> Except for those rare times they do, when they've been, you know, cursed by a curse or something. This is not my forte. So I'm just... Then, kind of, totally not a brownie. I, I'm kind of going to listen as my co-hosts talk and just make horrified faces like i'm i'm going to invent the the scale of horrific cuteness facial meter join the herd sen no no i will not come on every pony's doing it so i'm okay. just gonna kind of sit here and listen and and I, later I, I, in the episode could, we'll have some league of legends i could stuff. play uh, i could play some episodes on my computer here. We're just going to silently play a few episodes while the show is going on, so I have some idea of what's being talked about. I suppose. Cause, Probably cause I not. Think I think the that would not make for good series, radio. Yeah, the furthest I got in the series was I can identify which ones are which. Hey, that's not hey! bad. <laughs> and Brad I still can't do that. And I know the Doctor Who one. Doctor Who's? Yes. And the Derpy one because of Penny Arcade. Well, this but sounds that's like, like the you're best pretty deep into it. So, that's... well, no, I'm I'm a member of the internet, so I've learned all of this. It's not a matter of I've watched more than a, an episode or two while hanging out with either Pixie or Luca, but uh, yeah, just being online, you get exposed to this. I mean, heck, it's even leaked into the old Republic. I saw arguments going on. As well, it should be. Uh, the first thing I need to do early on into the segment is stake my hipster claim that. I got into ponies well before anybody in my social circles did, so I'm the winner. Yeah, I'm the it, best. It's hipster. true. You were promoting this to us while we were at NAB. I remember that. Yeah. I get I get all the hipster points, and I can spend them on you know food and groceries and rent, because that's how that works. That, which is that's why everybody wants to be a hipster. But all right the, then. So does this mean all the, the bronies are starving to death? No, that, well, I guess the latecomers are. The early adopters are, you know, extremely wealthy. They're the 1%. You're, anyway, you heard anyway. it here first, folks. Bill Gates is a early adopter of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. He had faith in Lauren Faust. He liked Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. He knew what was coming. Who didn't like Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends? Well, Monsters. this is done by Lauren, Lauren Faust. Faust. Well, who would was you like the executive to get into the producer best? of uh, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, as well and as the Powerpuff, the Powerpuff Girls. Girls. And both of those were good shows. In fact, I, I actually saw Powerpuff Girls was actually is actually still on television. I was nice. like, oh my gosh! It's, it's like on. Uh, it's like, on Boomerang these days, isn't it? I don't know. Um, I know Dexter's Lab is on Boomerang, which makes me feel really old. But sweet, uh, love Dexter. Anyway, um, I, I did see that my step nieces were watching it, 
over uh, Christmas. It's a good show. The Christmas episode, and I was like, holy crap! Nice. So, I guess the really general background for somebody who's watching our show but is not a denizen of the internet, and how did you get here? My Little Pony Friendship is Magic is a children's television show on The Hub, which comes from a really vile, not very good, merchandising-based franchise of Hasbro's called My Little Pony that has had three and a half previous um, iterations of complete garbage media behind it. Yeah, where, for like, some you know, reason, the bad guys are just, you know, they turn good by being shared with or cried at. and all right. of, You can't distinguish one pony's personality from the next because they're all just meant to be palette swaps and toys that buy anyway. And that there's like a million of them in the earlier generations. They're just like, ten new ponies every episode. But somehow... Uh, I guess we're having problems logging into chat, Pyro. Jazz yes. Pyro. I'll have to check that out. Chad is having it. issues, and I have, I have a distinct feeling that there are at least a couple listeners who really want to get on to chat about ponies. I, I'm getting messages from people who would really like to talk to me about ponies. I, okay. I know for a fact uh, Old called me yesterday looking to uh, find out when the new showtime was, uh, as well as, you know, not not the least of which being uh, Pink, who... Is Pink is messaging me fan. right now and being all like, yo, dog, where are the ponies at? <laughs> Apparently not in chat, because I can't even get in. Oh, that's because you're not on the admin. The admin page works just fine. <laughs> so the administrators can chat with each other. Ah! Which we're already doing. Somehow, somebody at Hasbro got the idea to take this pretty much uh, defunct garbage franchise and, talk and explodes. assemble what? a cracked team of really talented <laughs> creative professionals and give them complete control of it. And that resulted. Well, I wouldn't say complete control. There were still like certain elements that Faust had to work in. Right. Um, but she twisted them in her own creative way, which I found really. Um, I don't want to say interesting. There's probably a better word, but commendable. Um, she, so, for example, one of they set out to actually make a show rather than just sell merchandise. I, th I think that would be well, the key difference. She set out to make a show. They still want the merchandise, but yeah. Um, Although, it's, surprisingly... It's, it's, it's more of a, oh, go ahead, you silly lady. <laughs> For some wait, reason, Wait, Hasbro you think this can have content? Has really? not really put out adequate merchandise for this, what is fundamentally a merchandising franchise. They have no good Friendship is Magic toys. Or plushies, it's terrible. because I would buy those, and they're not available. Yeah, there, there's no question that the internet the at that large are... would purchase these things if they were available. And I see, like, shirts and stuff, which are technically illegal. But... <laughs> yeah, no, people make shirts for this all the time. I've seen bead sprites made, um, various pictures, uh, like magnets. Creative adaptations, derivative works. They're basically great. We'll get into that later. Um... What I was just starting to say was that there were certain elements that Faust had to work with to work within the show, and she put a little bit of a twist on them. Like she want the the execs wanted like fashion oriented stuff. Uh, so instead of what I was just saying, you can let the fans know that they can log in now. Oh, yeah. chat works, I guess. Chat's up. Maybe you, just you have can to say that reload instead your of poking page. me. Anyway, so they wanted to work fashion in, and so instead of making just some, like, airheaded, fashion-obsessed character, um, we have Rarity, who is, yes, very into fashion, but that's because she owns her own boutique. She's a business owner. <laughs> Which is much more meaningful than if it was just, you know, random little girls into fashion. Yep. Uh, and, and I feel like one of the core um, themes of the series is basically that there's no one way to be a girl, which is a feminist. I'm like, yay! But <laughs> and, uh, because you've got, well, the, the main cast, six characters, all of which are undoubtedly feminine in their own way. Whether well, that's they... being athletic, whether that's being demure and shy, whether that's being... Um, Bookish Boisterous and, and hardworking. 
<laughs> that too. <laughs> Um, so I, I want to start this off with an account of how I initially got into ponies, because it, it will be the same as most people in the beginning, which is that the internet was abuzz with this, and I was like, why is the internet talking about this so much? I should go check it out. But then the variation on that is that I did not start off at the first episode. I actually started off at episode 11, which is the one with the Paris sprites. Which, if, if you look closely at it, is pretty much lifted directly from Star Wars, the original series. The I, episode I Trouble with Tribbles. That's Star Trek. Yeah, or Star Trek. Trek. Yeah, Star Trek, the original series episode, The Trouble with Tribbles. Do you, you just lost so much hipster cred right there. So much. I don't Star Trek think... fans are hip. I'm Moving pretty on. confident that I am well aware of what Star Trek and what Star Wars is, so I don't feel too bad about that slip of the tongue. Seeing as how I was <laughs> citing a specific episode at the time, and, you know, I'm playing anyway. the Old Republic. Um, anyway, the my reaction to this was like, well, okay, this is a little girl's show, except it's Star Trek, and the animation is brilliant. And Swarm so, of the Century is the name of the episode. JSYK. So from there, I went back to the pilot, which is the first episode and where most people would obviously start. And that that episode, which is spread across two parts and so is about 45 minutes long without commercials, is Dragon Ball Z. Except it's a little girl's show. And it's this is has so a intense. brilliant animation. But it's, it's like, you know, all these they get all these characters together and they set up, like, who they are and what they're doing. And, and then it's like, oh, man, gotta go take on the Apocalypse Pony. It, it is the entire arc more like of the Lord original of the Dragon Ball series compressed well, into two 22-minute episodes. Darn it. Because, yeah, you know, there's a big fight and there's, like, you know, magical transformations, lots of glowing and... And and they, have, they have to go through a series of trials, and they each use their special talents to overcome the trials, so that they can get to the giant monster and become mega powerful. I have to check while we discuss this if the uh, My Little Pony fighting game has been updated at all. Oh, MLP fighting is magic? Uh, it's been hit with the censorship. Uh, no, actually, it's, it's down... I know, it's the actual... It, it's a protest. Yeah. It's still frustrating. Yeah, so. well, imagine how much more frustrating it, w it would be if it was actually stopped. Well, yeah, because this would be completely brought down by it, but they're apparently looking for a voice actress for the rarity character in the game. The All right. most notable thing about the fighting game, to just take a little detour, is that it has amazing music. Should check out those YouTube videos because the the stage music for each character, great. Um. Okay. Now that I've relayed my story of getting into ponies, let's go over the main six. Is there a funny name for those? I feel like there's got to be a name for that. Uh, it's it's the main six M A N E. Right, because <laughs> mains are hair. That makes yep. sense. So, um. The lead character is Twilight Sparkle, who is, who is a purple unicorn wizard. Dude does is super good at magic and a complete bookworm nerd, and you can see how like I might I totally identified with her the second I saw her with a book. <laughs> Being introduced to the series out of order, I actually kind of thought she was super mean at first. Because, well, she's very absent-minded, and she's got an assistant baby dragon named Spike, and she is completely callous towards him, and just throws him around like a, a plush doll. But, uh, having started on the Swarm of the Century, I was like, wow, Twilight Sparkle is a jerk. And she was, like, one of my least favorite ponies until I actually started progressing through the until series. Until you actually got the context that you were meant to have. At which point, I was like, wow, she is definitely the best. Heck yeah. Twilight Sparkle fan club over here. I will accept no dissent on the fact that Twilight Sparkle is the best pony. I'm just waiting for Flutter Kai to disagree with this in chat. Because, obviously, you know, the name. 
Anyway, so the, the main six, we've got Twilight Sparkle, who we've already established is, you know, the bookish nerdy, nerdy type. And she is sent to Ponyville to discover the lessons on friendship. And she has to report back to the ruler of Equestria, Princess Celestia, on her findings. And so each episode basically takes, like, a problem that, you know, eventually gets solved, and then from there we're supposed to learn something about friendship. Apparently magical. <laughs> uh, that, that doesn't quite make, that There is a way in which that makes sense, except it's not explored very well in the show. The initial two episodes consist of them <laughs> gathering the elements of harmony, which are basically the Dragon Balls, insofar as they're really powerful when they're all brought together. MacGuffins and... And, you know, um, loyalty and compassion are amongst them. And for some reason, magic is that's... one of them, and it's uh, not... No, magic is the final element that's not actually part of the elements of harmony. It's supposed to be, you know, you find it within yourself when you find friendship type of thing. Oh, okay. It's, it's, well... it's, it's like the sucker punch thing. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah. That's the, the remember, she's all like, oh god, where's that other element? And they're all like, she's all like, haha, you don't have them all. And then it's like, friends show up, and it's like, yay! Pacha! Also, the fifth element. None of that made any sense unless you've seen it, so go watch the pilot. Funny, I'll, I'll when wait. my friends show up, things also tend to explode too, but for entirely different reasons. Mostly just because individual. we just carry around grenades and fling them anywhere. Be like, hey, nice apartment you got there. Kaboom, last time we had, last time we had a grenade fight, we lost forty two friends. That's where they all keep going. Grenade fights. I thought your cooking scared them off. Slightly more destructive than uh than your cooking than snowball fights. <laughs> okay. Yeah, anyway, you go over Rainbow Dash. Me. Oh, you want me to go over Rainbow Dash? Uh, let's see. Rainbow Dash is a blue Pegasus pony, and she has a long, tousled, messy mane that is rainbow-colored. And she's very athletic, and I don't want to say tomboyish, but she's, like, rough and tumble, and um, very obsessed with, like, self-image and being cool, and uh, m mostly she's known for being very fast and tough. And she can fly, which she does a lot. <coughs> And, like, her big dream is to go join the Wonderbolts, which is apparently, like, a flying team that is, like, super pro and stuff. So are we talking, like, the Blue Angels of Ponies? It's not a, that's not a totally inaccurate statement there. Righto. Anyway. Pyro, so, did you want to take one, or...? I'll, I'll, I'll do Rarity, who is the white and the other unicorn, except... She is not a very good unicorn because she doesn't There's use her magic each. for anything other than telekinesis. And it's sort of a pattern because there's there's two Pegasus ponies, and one of the Pegasus ponies does not ever fly. And so, Rarity is a fashion designer, and she has a shop, and sh her element of harmony is supposed to be compassion. If generosity. I remember that. Generosity. And that... Right, uh, Fluttershy is compassion. No, it's uh, kindness, technically, but... Okay. It's been a long time since I've watched the pilot. But she does not quite embody the ideal of generosity a lot of the time. Oh, which... a lot of the time she's, like, you know, giving out free stuff. She's like, oh, I'm gonna make you something. It's like, yay. But, and then there are other entire episodes where, like, specifically she needs to be told, stop thinking about yourself. <laughs> so it's kind of weird. Oh, hey, sup, tall. Didn't see you there. We have multiple so, chatters. By that I mean two. <laughs> hey, two is good enough. But man, chat is a flutter with discussions of poniness. Heh, <laughs> flutter. Anyway. And, that was supposed okay, to be a transition. <clears throat> what is happening in chat is that they're talking about the sort of whiplash that I think this show has because it, it kind of changes its mind a little bit. Uh, all of the different episodes are written by a bunch of different writers. Mm -hmm. I think the, there's significant quality variation between particular episodes. I'm going to just interrupt our, our discussion of the ponies to talk about 
the episode that I hate. Because mostly... The we, didn't inter- we didn't introduce the rest of the six, though, and so... You, you your, want to do that? Your, your thing is not going to make sense without that context. Okay, All right, let's let's keep introducing At the very then. least, let's introduce Pinkie Pie. Okay. She is an earth pony. It's just, just like... My Little Pony talk for just a regular pony, but... <laughs> yeah, just... Because they need no a powers. title, too. Being an Earth Pony's gotta suck, because, I mean... If, if you had to pick one, obviously you'd want to be a unicorn, because one of the powers that you could have as a unicorn pony is to conjure yourself some dang wings and then fly around. So, that, that easily beats the other two. Doesn't that make the Pegasus... Specialness completely irrelevant. Oh no! See, the unicorns can do magic, but you still have to study and work at it and that uh, type of thing. And so, if you're really good at magic, you can do that. But gotcha. As you recall, Twilight Sparkle only did that once in an episode, and they were incredibly fragile. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So, so Pinkie Pie, she's pink. She likes to party. She's kind of the ditzy, random... Uh, she, she represents the element of laughter, is her element of harmony. And she's supposed to, I guess, be the funny one. She kind of wears on my nerves, but, you know, whatever. So the guy in the chat claims to that she's the best. She's supposed to represent, I think, that one friend that everybody has that's all like, we're so crazy! <laughs> And I actually, I was really not into Pinkie Pie because of my introductory episode, and the denouement of the Swarm of the Century is that Pinkie Pie knew all along that these, you know, reproducing monsters that were destroying everything can be lured away with music, and so she's trying to assemble a bunch of instruments so she can lure them away, but she never... Bits it out to be like, hey, they can be lured away with music. Let's deal with this. She's just bumbling around, failing to solve the problem for a long time. And I was like, <laughs> and, and it would be and the problem would be solved just so incredibly quickly if she would just communicate that fact directly. Instead, she's like, oh my god, why isn't anybody listening to me? And it's like you're not saying anything <laughs> because she's she's just too wacky to have saved the town from destruction. Yeah. So anyway. Um. I'm, 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 I'm definitely not a big fan of people who can't communicate things directly. <laughs> Once we've come this far, I guess Applejack is the brown earth pony, and she <clears throat> is the farmer. She's more of a and she's the color. hillbilly. Yeah, she's tan. Uh, she's, she's not a hillbilly. She's like, you know, a southern belle type. She's Her element is loyalty, and so she's very hardworking. She'll basically do anything to help a friend, and now she's got five of them. And... <laughs> And uh, she, she's she's also very tough. There's there's a lot of similarities between her and Rainbow Dash in that sense. But she's, uh, forgive the pun, more down to earth. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's an earth pony. Um, yes. I couldn't come up with anything else there. I was just like, oh god, this is gonna be terrible, and I said it anyway. She does the useful work of making sure all of the other ponies don't starve to death. There's something to be said for that. Yeah, so she, you know, is basically one of the primary ponies. We never see anybody, hardly anybody else doing it. So she does basically all of the work on Sweet Apple Acres, which is, you know, runs this great big apple orchard. What do horses eat, guys? Carrots. They have other plants on the farm. It's just mostly an apple orchard. Hi, Q. Welcome to chat. We're talking about ponies today. <laughs> anyway, so moving on. You uh, really hate the episode of Feeling Pinky Keen. And this is the one that almost killed me on the series, to be honest. <laughs> For the reason that it is... The message of that show is basically, hey kids, just be superstitious and don't ever try and do science because, you know, science is not useful for anything. The summary of the episode is that um, the rumor around town is that Pinkie Pie has some manner of complicated clairvoyance where she's able to 
predict the future via, you know, various bodily twitches and movements and strange ways. And so Twilight Sparkle, who is, you know, a down-to-earth, book-read, educated person, is like, that seems pretty suspect, and I'm gonna see, check this out. And so Twilight Sparkle starts investigating Pinkie Pie's predictions, and they basically all turn out to be true. And I'm still okay with the episode at this point. So, based on the evidence, it seems that Pinkie Pie is able to predict the future. And so, Twilight Sparkle is like, well, this is very strange. I wonder how this works. And so, um, Twilight Sparkle hooks Pinkie Pie up to some testing equipment and is waiting for her to predict the future. Then Pinkie Pie is like, no, this is dumb. And then, not very helpful. And... Despite her best efforts, Twilight Sparkle fails to uncover any mechanics that cause this. And then, without... Pretty quickly, she actually gives up to show she's like, Hmm, Pinkie Pie can predict the future. I guess we'll just not do anything about it. And that's the end of the episode. And it drives me crazy. And it's, it's never like, mentioned again, right? Right, no, it never comes up again. So, who can we blame for directing this one? Is this like, was this the main cast directing it, or, uh, or was this a guest director? The writing credit on the episode is different <clears throat> from most of the other episodes. It's not the normal person. Uh, but it is a person who wrote some other episodes, and the other episodes were kind of okay, maybe? I, I don't know. Uh, according to Flutterkai in the chat, this does come up again, but it's never terrible. It's never as important as clairvoyance should be, because that should be pretty important if you have that power reliably. <laughs> I love one did... of our chatters is a dictionary of all things pony. This is very convenient. Yeah. So, <clears throat> the thing that mostly drove me crazy about this episode, besides the fact that if Twilight Sparkle was able to investigate this and then reproduce it, all of the ponies could benefit from the ability to know when to dodge mysteriously falling pianos. As you know, sometimes pianos fall out of the sky, and only Pinkie Pie will know to get out of the way. But if Twilight Sparkle investigated and reproduced it, everybody could dodge falling pianos. And then, the reason that this is particularly egregious is that this is a little kids show, particularly Targeted for at little girls. Targeted young girls, who are already conditioned throughout their schooling that science and math is not for them. That's a boy's thing. And, and this so show the has theme averted of this that most, most times. And except this one particular episode, which thematically tells them... That, you know, oh, science isn't necessary, and just superstitious nonsense is okay. And in fact, verbatim, the, uh, the, the lesson about friendship from this episode that we are supposed to gather, gather is that just because some things cannot be explained does not mean that they are not true. And a friend can help you choose to believe in them, so, you know, peer pressure and superstition. That's pretty ridiculous. But... Yeah, I, I guess that is all we really have to say on that topic. That one episode was pretty sucky, but the rest are very good. So, if you're watching it, skip that one. It is number 16. 15. 15. Yeah, I'm getting all of my facts slightly wrong. It's alright, we have Flutterkai to correct us. And... Well, being to Flutterkai says that the show is about tolerance and love. And that being superstitious, that they had to be allowant of the superstition so that they could be tolerant and loving. And I think that that is not true. Because the, even the way they could have what ended it, it... What they did was, what they did instead was show an intolerance for the sciences, for women in the sciences. 
They could have even ended that episode almost exactly the way it already was, with Twilight Sparkle being like, huh, well, it seems like you have this power. Um, and I haven't been able to figure it out yet, but we're going to keep investigating on weekends and stuff whenever we have free time. Or, you know, <laughs> since she and Pinkie Pie could team up and be like, okay, let's figure out how to replicate this for the benefit of others or something. Yeah, that seems perfectly reasonable to me. But, yeah. Other than that, the show is very good. And we skipped we skipped one introduction, and I'm sure Flutter Kai will not excuse us for that, because it is his namesake in chat. And that is Fluttershy, the other Pegasus pony. Who, who basically is, never flies. <laughs> who very, very rarely flies. Because she is extremely timid. And... Um, takes care of the creatures of the forest. This is the one who's most likely to have come out of the older generations of My Little Pony. The, she is very, very girly in the demure and conventional ways. So, but cute squirrels. She's the one Hasbro just happened to insert. It's like, we really want we this one. We suspect that strongly. <laughs> she's got sort of Dr. Doolittle-like powers, and she's able to talk a dragon down from a fight. That's pretty cool. Um, she more like berates him down from a fight. Yeah. And apparently wrestled a bear. Yes. It's pretty But she's pro. basically afraid of everything, too. Like, you know, the leaf lands on her butt, and all of a sudden she <laughs> freaks out and causes an avalanche. Righto. Yeah. Sometimes I freak out when things touch my butt. <laughs> so she's also kind of there for the slapstick humor. A little bit. Although it seems like all of the characters are when capable of it. When, when it's at her expense. But the internet is in love with her because apparently her shyness and demureness and... Well, because the, the internet's obsession with the ponies is apparently full of young men. It's, she embodies the ideal woman. Man, Foster's never had this kind of fan base. Not really. So, the reason we're talking about ponies today... Besides the fact that, that nothing uh, there's has come no out for a video month games straight. coming out whatsoever. Actually, there's there's three things that came out very, very recently that I wasn't able to play or review. Um, one of them was Dust Force. The other one was the Genki Bowl DLC for Saints Row the Third. And this will break your heart. <laughs> Why? Internet, I kind of hate you most days. But I, I'm showing him on Google Images how people have humanized the characters. <laughs> eh, I, I'm a big fan of pretty much all the stuff. I think that there's a lot of ridiculous and yeah, maybe the, dumb the... stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, sure, go for it. It's cool. I love it. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the problem is that, you know, they're... they're turning the ponies into well, images with sex appeal. Eh. Like, the cutesy ones I have no problem with. Yeah. It's when they start trying to make them sexy is I have problems. I'm yeah. sorry, what 4chan rule was it? 34. Thank you. Actually, this is kind of adorable. Like... <laughs> Anyways, the reason we're talking about ponies, other than the fact that there weren't any games coming out, is that today's Internet Censorship Day, and ponies are tangentially related to Internet Censorship Day. Cause so there, there's your tie-in. <laughs> well, no, because, there's, because the internet has fallen in love with it, what does the internet do with things that it loves? Derivative well, grind, works. Grinds it, it into the ground. It them like crazy, which is the reason <laughs> that anybody watched My Little Pony in the first place. If they actually had to turn on a TV and watch the hub, find the hub. My would Little be Pony the, the would not point. be a thing on the internet, not at all. I, I'm sorry, but the first time you guys were like, "It's on the hub," the immediate thing in my brain was, "What the hell what is the that? Hell is Ooh. that?" <laughs> Seeing as I don't, I don't even know how to operate my TV because I've never had to, so yeah, I'm, see, this, like, this very occasionally right I'm like, I need to find a channel. How do I do that? <laughs> I don't know what any of the channels are. And then, the other thing the internet has done is create an enormous amount of original content based on the 
commercial content of the actual TV show. And so, the most obvious ones are songs and stuff. There's an endless amount of remixes and songs that sample from the My Little Pony television show, as well as a mu original music written based on the themes in the show. And so, that is something that is basically unambiguously illegal, according to the present copyright system. And the trick there is that there hasn't been enough enforcement that the fact that it's illegal has deterred anybody. Also, the, the Hub and Hasbro are aware of their brony fan base. I mean, they've given them a shout-off in the Equestria Girls song, but... This, they don't appear to give enough of a crap to do anything about the stuff online. Well, their position is very strange because initially it seemed like they knew that all of their episodes were on YouTube and they were like, yeah, sure, go for it. Then, um, one of the original uploaders, uh, Menlo Marsiles, uh, got his videos removed by a DMCA request and... I don't know if that was, like, first party high up in the chain, or just a rogue lawyer who sent the request without consulting any of the creative team or anything. I'm but, sorry, Pyro, I'm now getting a visual of the rogue lawyer who's, like, on the first floor, right behind the staircases where he lurks. The rogue yes. lawyer. He'll the just one who jump waits you and the... pickpocket you. And then hit Rogues you with a do subpoena. It from behind. Uh, wow. Kai is claiming that they were they wanted a 24-hour gap between the their TV show airing live and being uploaded on YouTube. And a policy like that is somewhat reasonable. But I, without... I think that that's a really reasonable and mature policy as far as I see it, that like, hey, this is going to end up online. Okay, just give us some time to run it with the advertising, and then you can, then it's free. And yes, I, that, I think that's a very mature way for a company to look at it. That does make sense, but the problem is still that without an explicit contractual agreement, the uploaders are still unambiguously breaking federal law. And it one thing is that maybe Hasbro should make this content available on the internet themselves. I mean, that would be an ideal solution, but yeah. that does not account for all of the derivative works, the remixes and the samples and the original content, which is also pretty clearly just illegal. And so the bill that's under discussion today, uh, SOPA and PIPA, are mostly enforcement bills and crazy enforcement bills that would allow the already present laws making these uploads and these derivative works illegal be enforced in very powerful ways, as well as allowing media companies to attack sites even somewhat completely unrelated to copyright infringement. Um, one example of that would be uh, game producers taking down bad reviews using SOPA provisions, which is completely plausible the way SOPA is written. But one one concern I have, and probably you've seen today that Wikipedia is blacked out and Reddit and there's the Google logo is changed and lots of other things are different, indicating that the internet is protesting these two bills. But while these bills need to be defeated, there's also some other changes that need to be made. Because I have I have two perspectives on the uh, copyright issue. One is that I want creators to be able to make money off their content, and the other is that I want content to be available, and I want creators to be able to create their content, which, say, the people who do these pony remixes and such would not be able to do if the present law was enforced well. Um, so... Yeah. Um, SOPA and PIPA are awful, call your senators and such, but also think more about copyright law and go watch some awesome pony remixes and 
feel in your heart that you want them to continue to be available in the future. And then call your senators again. <clears throat> That's what I have to say about that. Yeah, Sopa and Peppa are very, very bad. Righto. And also, it sure sucks not being able to get to Wikipedia. I was like, I uh, probably don't go to Wikipedia every day, but then like seven times today I've been like, damn it. Aha, I have a solution for you, I, sir. I also have a solution. I mean, I'm well able to circumvent that. But it is yep. slightly less convenient than it just being there. Okay, so who wants to give their solution to Wikipedia first? Uh, um, do we want to give that out? I think it kind of defies the purpose of the blackout. But there are listeners. We should help them. It, no. It's, we're withholding that information so they go call their senators. Alright, mm. screw you listeners. Call your senators, then private message me. Or, <clears throat> learn computers all by yourselves. Right. Pirate oh. and Echo. Echoes. And not that guy. We haven't seen him in months. Indeed. Um, <laughs> so, did you want to talk about League of Legends, Sen? Yes, and sure. I had a nice transition going in that Riot has been leading protests against SOPA for quite some time on their site, too. Uh, especially a really awesome thing. They got a... Like, the second response on their latest thread was actually from a representative from Colorado who does play League of Legends and is opposed to SOPA and PIPA. So, um, yeah, they, they've been against SOPA for, and had something on their site for weeks now about how users can, uh, can express their concern with, uh, with this bill. But for League of Legends, we've actually had some news this week that I wanted to get to, uh, the key piece of which has been a new champion released. This would be the, I think the number is at 93rd champion in League of Legends. Uh, it is a new female tank bruiser hybrid character named Sujani. So we got a nice little art here. I'll go ahead and link it in chat for people. Just a second. Cool. So there sure are a lot of champions nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just can't wait to see what they do for number 100, which will definitely be happening this year. So... Sh Sejani is kind of unique in that she is the first champion in the game who is riding a real mount. I, I know people are going to bring up, like, Rumble and Nunu, who are also people riding things, but this is the first, like, traditional person mounted on a thing that is in the game. Uh, seeing as Sejani is riding a giant war pig. <clears throat> that is intimidating looking. Yeah, so this character is a half-dressed female viking with a giant ice maul riding a pig. This picture has her in, you know, the deep Antarctic, wearing almost no clothing, and I figure that's got to be pretty cold. Yeah, that is definitely a leather bikini with that's shoulder guards. because, you know, women's depiction in games is primarily to be eye candy. And, and oddly enough, like, League is only really guilty of this with a couple champions that I can think of. Most of them. Okay, so, we're talking Caitlyn and Misfortune for the most part being guilty of this. And Akali and Nidalee. And most of the characters. It's the okay, exception, not the rule, that they actually be dressed reasonably. It's gotcha. the exception. Well, Sajani definitely falls into that standard category then, don't you think? Yep. As that is definitely a snowstorm blowing on her, and that is definitely a leather bikini she's in. So I assume that since she's got a mount, she moves really fast? Not really. Her move speed is a little faster than average. Um, Flutterkai, maybe you can find out that stat for me, exactly what her move speed is, so I can compare it to It's people. 315. Okay, that, that's average. And the way they justify the mount is that she has a lot of surge forward moves, where she, she will charge using it. But overall, she is an average character as far as her movement speed goes. Um, the big things that make her unique is that she is just all kinds of into manipulating enemy movement. Uh, her basic, I'm trying to look up her specific moves. All I found is the, uh, the post about the two skins are available for sale if you buy them as a pack. Yeah, here we go. Champion Spotlight for Sejani and her patch notes because 
Man, there were a lot of character patches this uh, this time. And let me pull this up. Okay, so Sajani, her passive is called Frost. Her basic attacks apply the Frost debuff, reducing the enemy movement speed by ten percent for three seconds. Doesn't sound that special, right? Uh, I don't know. That does sound. That sounds pretty special. <clears throat> well, That's there are in-game effects that do far better than that. Like, you can get a frozen mallet, which reduces the enemy speed by 30% uh, for longer. But all of her basic attacks do this. Um, even Gangplank, I think, does a 5% reduced speed and a, and a damage over time for his basic attacks. Uh, <clears throat> but what's really special is when you combine Frost with her other moves. So, uh, her Q, Arctic Assault, and this is where the mount comes in. Sajani charges forward to deal magic damage and apply frost to enemies. Sajani stops when col uh, colliding with an enemy champion. So, there you go. You can charge through a whole wave of minions and put frost on them and then slam into an enemy champion. It's a great gap closer. It'll definitely get you into combat. Which opens up for her uh, W, Frozen Winds. Sajani summons an arctic storm around her, deals magic damage to nearby enemies every second. Damage is increased against enemies affected by frost or permafrost. So, you have an increased power, essentially the same animation as burnout. Uh, Shivana's uh, E. Actually, no, that would be her... Yeah, the, no, that's Shivana's W. So it's essentially the same thing, but it has increased damage as long as the enemy has frost or permafrost attached to them, which is kind of awesome. That That's actually a really good combo. Uh, great for clearing out minion waves. Potentially very devastating. The one thing that's hard about Sujani is that she's she really is an AD champion for her auto attacks, but all of her moves scale off of AP. So she's, she definitely fits the hybrid qualifier. Interesting champion. No, oh, nope, I'm being corrected by uh, Flutterkai. Oh, yeah, who claims that she is strictly a tank rather the than a tanks bruiser. on the wiki claim tank, comma, fighter, comma, melee. And usually the fighter, fighter tag gives you the bruiser category because that's what Ren fits in, that's what Riven fits in, but I guess they want her to be a straight-up tank, so hey, I was right. League of Legends did get a tank next. Uh, continuing, Permafrost, her E. Sajani converts frost on nearby enemies to permafrost, dealing magic damage and increasing the movement speed reduction dramatically. Yeah, you basically explode a ring around you, and anyone affected with your frost takes more damage and has more movement speed reduction. That's actually a, a great ending to her combo, because then you can just uh, let your teammate get in and finish off the target. If she really is supposed to be working as a tank, then everything you should be doing is there to contribute to your teammate, and that is exactly what she is. Although she looks like she'll actually do more damage than, say, someone like Leona, who can only stun people and wait for help to arrive. And finally, we have her ultimate. Sujani throws her weapon, stunning the first enemy champion hit. Uh, they basically get trapped in a giant glacier. Nearby enemies are stunned for a short, short duration, so she has an AoE stun that does a longer stun on the targeted hits. Uh, all targets take magic damage and are afflicted by frost. This thing is probably her coolest looking move. She just throws a giant ice chunk out in front of her and anything that gets hit gets frozen. This sounds like it should have an animation almost as cool as Fizz's shark attack one. Does, does the ice just come up from the ground? <clears throat> It yeah, looks like she, it does from the ice. She part. will th she will throw a chunk of ice forward, and then the last target, the first enemy champion that it hits, a giant pillar of ice shoots out from under them. Uh, still not quite as cool as a shark, but pretty cool. Dude is going to be able to top shark. The shark is possibly the coolest looking move in the game. Well, speaking of other champions, we've also had a ton of uh, changes made to currently existing champions. Um, Ari got a nerf. Who didn't see that coming? Uh, Orb of Deception has had its mana cost increased by 10. Not really a big deal. And the cooldown of Spirit Rush has been increased by 10 seconds. Oh no. 
10 seconds is, is a little bit, but otherwise that's it's not a little a bad bit, nerf. The, the character's still totally functional, no big deal. Um, Dr. Mundo got a huge buff, because who didn't want to play Dr. Mundo? Like, really? Uh, Dr. Mundo's had his base speed increased on his uh, attacks. Uh, his attack speed per level has been increased. His magic resist has been increased. His burning agony health cost has been reduced. So, yeah, you can do your moves and take less damage now. And his sadism ultimate cooldown has been reduced by 10 seconds. Yay! Still no reason to play Mundo. Really? You don't really? like Mundo? I do not like Mundo. I... I question any time someone on my team picks Mundo, and I have a little celebration for myself every time an enemy picks Mundo. <laughs> Alright, continuing. Fizz had some nerfs, because who didn't see that one coming? Um, these are actually nerfs that were planned for the Ari patch, but didn't make it into the game for some reason. Uh, so they fixed a bug where Chum the Waters stopped working if Fizz died. This is one of the few effects in the game that actually continues after the character is dead. So if someone gets hit with the fish, they are going to get hit by the shark. There's no question, there's no stopping it. Even killing Fizz will not stop the shark. Scary, right? Yeah. That, that sounds like a sci-fi channel original. <laughs> Unstoppable shark. Um, let's see. Hitting an enemy who is immune to the fish now causes the fish to drop to the ground instead of fizzling. So basically, if Fizz Hit throws the fish, fizzling. which summons the shark, um, if it hits someone who is immune to it for some reason, so say someone's got Morgana's uh, spell shield up, instead of just the move not working at all, the shark will actually leap from the spot on the ground where the fish hit the champion. So it's a dodgeable if you're immune to it. Yeah. You have to dodge it, then. It doesn't just go away. So, All right. I'm, I'm okay with Chum the Water's actual ability power, but I feel like the animation should be nerfed, because that animation is just OP. It's too that strong. animation is too strong? Yeah, I can't um, take it. There is now a 3-2-1 timer. At it. Nice. There is now a 3-2-1 timer on the fish, so when you get hit with it, you'll actually see a time over, timer over your head. This is like Zillion's time bomb attack. Well, in case you happen to be Soraka with Wish Up. <laughs> yep. And finally, the nerf that a lot of people are counting as a buff for Vlad. The move no longer hits non-targetable units like Vlad when he's in his sanguine pool. Or Fizz when he's at uh, atop his uh, trickster pole. If you can't be hit targeted for some reason, you now can't be hit by, by this move. Kind of a big deal. Seems more like a fix, really. Yeah, but it's a buff for Vlad. Um, Graves got nerfed again. Graves has only been nerfed since this game came out. What a, if you should have played Graves when it was Graves when he came out first, and then I, I been did. I, on I played Easy Graves Street. the day he came out, and my God, was he powerful! But like, it seems Riot is just content with grinding him out of existence. They're just like, gonna keep keep nerfing him until his movement speed is zero and he has to stay in the summoning pool the whole game. Graves does not move and in fact, if you look at him, he will die. Um, let's see. Jarvan got buffed, which meh. I've never really seen anyone seriously play Jarvan, so I can't say much about him, but lower mana cost, uh, increased mana per level. Why not? Maybe people will start playing Jarvan. I, I always thought he looked kind of silly, to be honest. I've um, never seen anybody play that. The huge list is that Jax got completely redone. I'm not going to read through this list because I don't understand a lot about Jax, but that said, his Counter-Strike ability is terrifying. So Dodge is being removed from the game. Mm -hmm. That That's been done. It'll officially be, con be confirmed next patch. Um... Jack still has a move called Counter-Strike, so he spins his pole above his head, and Jax will dodge all incoming basic attacks for one and a half seconds. At the end of which, he will do an AoE spin that will uh, stun enemies, and the damage will be increased for each attack that's been dodged, up to 50 extra damage per attack. Wow. Imagine Jax just standing in the middle of a team fight, and over that one and a half seconds, he dodges, say, 
10 attacks. That's a lot. Yeah. Jax just did an additional uh, 300 damage on top of the normal 160 damage. Uh, did for a lot of damage. Activating this one move in a wide AoE. Oh, and he stunned every enemy near him for one second. Like, everyone who was like, this is going to break Jax, Jax is no longer playable. BS. Jax is totally still awesome. I am still afraid of seeing Jax. So, Jarvan's ult is called Cataclysm, and yep. without reading its description, I can only assume that it just causes you to be playing World of Warcraft instead of League of Legends. <laughs> causes you to quit World of, or quit League of Legends and go play WoW? Yes. Actually, if there's anything like the real Chasm, causes 50% of your subscribers to quit the game and go play something else. You mean Chasm? Uh, it it yeah. causes them to all come back for a single month, and then leave. And then quit again. No, the actual move, he dives into the air and a giant ring of ground explodes up around uh, where he lands, trapping anyone who was near him at the time. Uh, let's see. Nunu got a buff. His basic attack speed's been increased. It seems like they're doing this for a lot of characters, actually. Uh, Ramus, Powerball's duration has been reduced to 7 seconds. Powerball's initial speed increased to 30% from 25%. And his defensive curl damage has been reduced. Okay, Ramus was really good. I, I can see why this change was made, to be honest. Uh, Riven. Basic movement speed reduced. Base health regen reduced, health regen per level reduced, broken wings, her basic Q, damage increased, and her key burst damage has been decreased. So this is right, kind of telling Riven players you're doing it wrong, which I can kind of get behind. Um, I tried her out in two bot matches this evening before, uh, before we did the show, and I can honestly say I'm really impressed with... Uh, with how she runs. I, I don't see much of a difference, but having Broken Wings actually be an effective ability is kind of sweet. Yeah. Continuing down the list, uh, Shaco's Jack in the Box duration has been reduced to 60 seconds. Kind of a huge deal. Because, like, one of the old Shaco strategies is yeah, I'm just going to stack five of these Jack in the Boxes in a bush, and then when anyone walks into here, they're dead. I don't have to do anything, they'll just be dead. Sounds OP. Yeah, so reducing that to 60 seconds actually sounds like a really fair plan. Um, Jack in the Box has also now show their remaining duration in seconds in their mana bar. So you'll be able to see how much time you've got left. This is just kind of a quality of life change. Um, let's see. Skarner. Crystal Slash mana cost adjusted from 15 to all levels. So yeah, he actually has scaling mana now. His Crystal Slash Slow has been decreased, percentage-wise, and his Impale cooldown has been increased. So big nerf for Skarner, but let's see. Best jungler in the game? Kind of had it coming. I think I'd rather take Skarner over uh, Udyr any day. Skarner can actually do things. <laughs> okay, Trindamir. Whole new set of nerfs. Let's see. Base attack speed lowered just by, like, 3%. Ooh. Or sorry, basic attack damage has been lowered by 3.2. Um, base health or base health regen per 5 reduced. That's actually kind of a big deal, because now people can actually lane against Trindamir. Uh, Mocking Shout base attack damage reduced. And his Fury Decay will now begin after 5 seconds as opposed to 8. So yay, I'm okay with Trindamir nerfs all around the board. I hate that guy. Vayne also got some nerfs. Kind of sad about this one, but none of them are really a huge deal. Uh, her base movement speed got reduced. Uh, her speed bonus for Night Hunter got reduced. Her passive. Uh, Tumble's bonus damage got reduced, which is kind of a big deal, by 10% at all levels. And her final hour Tumble stealth duration got reduced by half a second. Not really a huge deal, but I'm always sad to see a character that I really love playing get nerfed. Meh. Still usable. Still really good. Just play better. Yep. Uh, Vigar, they fixed a bug where killing a unit with his Baleful Strike ability, his Q, would not create the proper particle effect. Because he actually gains power from killing things with his Q. It's one of the awesome things about Vigar. 
You farm with Q. Suddenly you can destroy anything. Uh, Vlad got his full set of scheduled buffs, which is kind of awesome. Uh, his basic Q, his, his bread and butter move, got its cooldown reduced. Uh, his The conversion rate on his Crimson Pact, his passive, has been reduced, unfortunately, but kind of had to happen. So he no longer gains AP from mana or from bonus health quite as fast as he used to. Cool. Uh, Hema Plague no longer costs 15% of your current health and is now no cost to cast. That's right, his ult now free. Wow. Right? Vlad just became so amazing just for that. Well, was was the cost really a significant limitation prior to this? 15% of your health. That's a significant limitation. Right. You you go into the team fight, and it's pretty much expected that the first thing you do is drop your Hemo Plague because it increases all incoming damage on the enemy. Wow, 15% of your maximum health bar just exploded. That's a wow. huge deal. And now it's free? Now it's free. Now you can drop a Hemo Plague every single fight. How could this possibly be balanced? Because of the fact that it's on such a high cooldown, and it doesn't do a ton of damage on its own. Okay. So, uh, for, for Hemo Plague to be effective, it really needs to be a team fight. And, like, yeah, you'll take down the last maybe 10% of someone's health bar with it, but it's not going to win a fight for you. Right. Unless All right. You, have, you have five people with you, four people with you. Yeah. And then it will win a fight for you. Yep. And finally... Tides of Blood health cost ramp up increased from 25% to 50%. So this would be his move where he hits himself for, I think the base cost is 40 health. And afterwards, uh, to do it again, it's going to cost an additional 50% of whatever it cost before. So the first time it'll ramp up to 60% and then uh, it'll be 90 so you're just spending health to do an AoE attack. It's it's like his least used move, to be honest. Right. Uh, Volibear buffed. Really? Big time buffed. But did Volibear didn't need a buff. Volibear got buffed. Uh, base armor increased by That's two. That's kind of stupid. Base armor increased by two Hold on, five. I gotta go buy Volibear, you guys. Right? <laughs> I, I was thinking about it today when I was reading this. Uh, Rolling Thunder damage increased, so that would be his throw move. Bully Bear now gains 15% movement speed for the duration. This bonus increases to 45% when he's moving towards an enemy champion. Wow. And fixed a bug where Rolling Thunder attack would sometimes cancel against fast-moving targets, so he'd get up to the target, and if they were moving fast enough, it just wouldn't connect with them. Uh, Frenzy's bonus health to damage ratio has been increased from 15% to 18%. Nice. This would be his bite that just kills people. That's like an ultimate, but isn't. Uh, and his Majestic Roar damage has been increased uh, by, a, by 40 points at max level. Really impressive. Uh, the the one unfortunate thing, Chosen of the Storm, his passive, the, the one that you're at a third of your health. Here, let me generate another third of your health back. Yeah, that no longer resets when you die. Oh, it, you, well, you have to actually wait for because... your you have to wait for your passive to come back. Now, you can't just be bad and expect that to be up every time. Sorry, Volibear players, get skill. Sorry, Brad, you can't use that as a crutch anymore. And finally, actually, we've got two more. Uh, Warwick, Hunter's Call cooldown has been reduced. Yay, Warwick buffs. It's really the move that doesn't matter. And Zareth got a quick bug where sometimes he would stun a target for less time than he should. Uh, the other big deal this patch that I don't know if most people have noticed, the uh, there have been a lot of art updates. Uh, a lot of characters have seen new art put in for them. Basically, if your character's art was just a recolor of another skin or another splash page, you've got new art for it. Uh, there's a new picture for Alistar, Fiddlesticks, Galio, Janna, and Malzahar, as well as new art for the skins for Unchained Malzahar, or Unchained Alistar, Bird of Prey and Nivea, Team Spirit and Nivea, Corporate Mundo, which is weird because that's a legendary, 
Bandito Fiddlesticks, Piltover Customs Heimerdinger, Pax Jax, which I find that really weird because that's an exclusive skin that you can't get anymore, Angler Jax, Shadow Prince Malzahar, Visor Malzahar, uh, Assassin Master Yi, which is his white skin, uh, Yellow Jacket Shen, also unavailable, Silent Knight Sona, totally unavailable, and White Mage Vigar. Why do an art update for stuff that isn't available anymore for purchase? That is a great question to ask. Is they're not going to make any money off of doing that? Eh? Um, you may also notice if you play bot matches that the bots now move in different lanes. Worth checking out, because it freaked me out the first time today when I went top lane expecting to square off against Sona and Misfortune, and Cho and Rennington showed up. Freaky. Freaky. So that'll be fun to check out in-game. Uh, also kind of a big deal, something I really like, colorblind mode has been added to the game. So nice. if you happen to be a colorblind League of Legends player, you can now go into the advanced video options and change it to colorblind mode, which will change the uh, visual representations of health bars and graphic effects so that you should be able to see it. Kind of awesome. Way to go Riot for, uh, for making that change. Indeed. Yep. So that's that's league news. I, I left out a couple things, but go in game. There's there's a ton of new stuff. The uh, the Sajani patch was huge. So yeah, I think that'll do it for uh, for this fine Tuesday or Tuesday Wednesday evening. <laughs> it was yeah, a good guess. It's, it's 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 hard to uh, it's hard to adjust. This is our temporary arrangements for right now, guys. At least School. for the next while. Yep. For a bit. Yep. For a few months. Man, we're all students now. Yep. Yep. Should do a class survival special. I could think that would work. Okay. Next oh, week. Oh no. Why do I keep promoting ideas? Because there's no games out and we need ideas. I was actually kind of determined that I wanted to finally sit down and play Rage. Well, oh, meh. It's a generic gray first-person shooter. It's supposed to be good looking. I thought we were tired of playing that. But we haven't played it in so long. God, when was the last time we did an FPS? Last month, probably. Maybe two months ago. I can't remember the last FPS we actually did. I think it was Space Marine, but that's technically a third-person shooter. So next episode, Stuff! There will, in fact, be stuff. In the meanwhile, I'm Pixie. I'm Sen. And I'm Parasim. And you've been listening to Nerd Talk.